Today I am learning how to use Photoshop AI for my 3D models. I will be honest, AI rise in creative industries has made me apprehensive and I would lie if it wouldn't worry me to see so many layoffs of creatives due to just employing AI technology instead of a human power. But this is not what we are going to do today. I will leave all the articles that I have found about this in the description if you want to go into that rabbit hole. Today we are going to look at how we can use AI as a tool to aid our creativity and more specifically Photoshop generative fill and how we can actually utilize it for our 3D models. So stay tuned if you want to learn with me today, subscribe to my channel to see more of these type of videos and let's get into this video. So over last half a year I have been dabbling into using generative fill as a creative tool for my workflow but I have realized I have no idea actually how to prompt it so I went on a little internet research to to understand how to actually use it. Watched a couple of videos, I researched a few articles and I will link all of them in the description if you are interested as well. There were a few immediate takeaways from this research and one of them were using as little verbs as possible. Try to describe your prompt with nouns and adjectives essentially and this is going to be a little English class for us today. So instead of using prompt leather that has been worn or leather that has scuffs, try to use more a prompt that is scuffed up leather or worn leather instead of using those has been or is or th those prompts doesn't really work. It only really works if you need to remove something so you can write remove add, expand more descriptive verbs than is and has. The second takeaway is to make your selection intentional. If you want to change certain thing in your image, only select the area with a little bit of an offset, a little bit of a room for that object. Don't select the whole thing and then say change this thing in the image to something else. It's going to generate an entirely new image. It's not going to change that one specific thing. So that's one thing that is actually great to know. And Sometimes you can use it, not even put anything in a prompt, just select area if you want to remove something, taking in consideration the context around it. All in all, these tips are really great and it brings me closer to what I actually want to do with the generative fill, but it's not exactly what I want to use it for. And I didn't do this research to generate the Swiss Alps. And I only mentioned this example because that's probably one of the most used examples when generative fill is used. If you have watched my videos, you might have seen saying that I like to test tools and I like to test tools where the application would be applicable also in the real life, not like some theoretical stuff. So my intention using generative fill is actually to generate some textures for our 3D model. We all know the material libraries that we have like a polygon or textures or polyhaven. We have all these websites that you can get your materials from. But if we want to generate something unique, we could could use generative fill in Photoshop. So this is something I actually was really excited about to try out and see what the result will be. So for this purpose I have created this model which is Mulberry Men's Wallet. It is pretty simple in its materials. We can identify pretty much four materials in this case which is the leather for the outer shell, zipper fabric, zipper teeth and zipper tag. So those are the materials that we will be generating. But before we start generating the materials itself, I want to mention that there are some very important words that you should include into your prompt, which is seamless to create tileable material and also texture so it doesn't think it's anything else other than just the material that you are generating. I will speed up this process where I'm generating the materials just so you can see that sometimes you have to generate multiple times the same prompt to get something half decent. Also in this process I did tweak some of the prompts a little bit just to get closer to an outcome.
We have saved our four materials that we have generated from Photoshop. And remind you, these are not adjusted by any means. It's literally just what has been generated. We have saved it and now we are going to use them just raw as they are in our 3D model just to see what the actual result just from the raw materials are. And then we can go further to fine tune it. So now we are going to build up these materials in Blender and we are going to use only the generated textures and we also do a little bit of UV unwrapping in here because we want to give a fighting chance for these textures to actually work and in most of the cases you would unwrap your 3D model. Now we are going to just apply image texture in our base color and we are also uh, using the same texture in our bump map because we just like switch it to non-color data and we can use that same image for our bump map. With few uh, adjustments in lighting, this is our result with textures that are unedited and just generated in Generative Fill in Photoshop. <laughs> I am surprised actually how good the result is, but just to give a little bit more care to this render, I am going to now adjust these textures as well as add few details to really make this render shine. So now I'm going to speed up that process and then uh, let's just share the final thoughts on this. So this is the final product with my human touch and I am actually very surprised about the generative fill and actually how useful it could be. My thoughts on this experiment is that I am still apprehensive about AI being used to replace humans. I think this experiment actually is a really good example to see that we still need a human touch and the, the critical thinking of a human for it to work so we can use it as a tool. And on that note, I am also quite excited about this and I'm looking forward to use it a little bit more and 
and see how it goes on. Don't worry, this is not going to become an AI generated channel, that's not my intention, and I will be back with more Blender focused content next week. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments, have you used AI? Have you used generative fill of Photoshop? How do you use it? Maybe you are held back by the whole AI technology due to the turmoil that is around it. Let me know your thoughts around this topic. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.